Hello. Hello. Sorry, I was a couple minutes late. And um, yeah, <laughs> it happens when you teach like, you know, five classes and then you're like, okay, I need a little little reset here before I go live. So I just wanted to say hello to everyone. And I just wanted to give an update on my out school class that I had yesterday. It was really great. Um, I had an out school class yesterday. Now this was a bread making class and I do have some classes on out school. They're kind of uh, different types of classes. I have a pet sharing class, a knitting class. Um, I have a baking class and I have a few other. Hello, Luann. Hello, Stephanie. Thank you for coming and Evelyn. Um, and so I really hadn't gotten many bookings. Like I did got a lot of finger knitting bookings right away. October, I had a really good month without school, but it's kind of dropped off. But I kind of have been having a hard time trying to figure myself out on out school, to be honest. <laughs> so I did join Lainey Goff's course. She has a course that she's doing. It's like a monthly subscription and you can be a part of that course and then she is sharing ideas on how to just kind of organize yourself for out school. And so I'm working on that. So I will be kind of streamlining my ideas, trying to figure out what I'm actually doing. I did open up some beginning reader classes. I didn't get any bookings for that. Um, and I got one student for making bread. So I went ahead and I taught the class and it was awesome. I was really glad that I did it because it kind of gave me some good practice on how to do it with the um, camera and everything. Um, it's kind of cool in Zoom. I have a new computer so I could do, you don't really need a G green screen to do a background. So I did a virtual background and that was kind of fun because I thought, you know, I could be in a really nice kitchen. I don't have to be like in, you know, make sure my house is perfectly clean and everything. But it didn't make it perfect because when you try to show stuff, the green screen was a little weird. So I had to turn it off and just go, you know, this is me. This is it. <laughs> I don't have a five-star kitchen, but um, it was a really great class. And I thought it was really great and I had a great time with it. But then after the class was over, I was like, oh my goodness, I hope she wants to come back because maybe that wasn't a good class. And um, so we messaged each other back and forth a little bit. And um, then later on last night, she said, I have a friend that wants to take the class. Do you mind if she takes the class with me? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> So, yeah, so maybe I'll get more students for that class. And that's an ongoing bread making class. And so it was really good. We only did just regular bread. I didn't do anything fancy. It was just, you know, how to make bread to start with. And I wanted to show you guys what the picture that she sent me. So this picture here was my bread. This is the one that I made. Um, actually, my boys, my two boys did it with me. They weren't completely thrilled about it, but I was really glad that they did it. It was their home at class. They learned how to make bread. And this is the picture that my student sent. So she made her bread and she said it tasted great. So I did have one little glitch. So I had one little glitch that happened while we were doing everything and I was really nervous about it. And then I forgot to mention that you put, we put sugar in with the yeast and everything and the liquids in a bowl. And I talked about the temperature of the yeast and how to make sure it's the right temperature and all that. And then we put the flour in and I forgot to put the extra sugar and a little bit of salt in with the flour mixture and then you're supposed to mix it up and then you put the two together and so she messaged me after class and she's like I think we forgot to put the sugar in because I had told her what ingredients to have and she had them all set out so I was like oh my goodness so 
I went back, looked at the recipe and I'm like, you're right. I think we forgot. So I said, we'll just put it in since it was at the beginning, we just needed it right in. And so, and I did the same thing. I actually had four loaves because the recipe that I gave her was two loaves. And then, so I had two of my boys that did it. So I took two of the loaves and I put them in the freezer. So I made two loaves of bread and then I, now I have two more, um, like two more loaves of dough in the freezer. So do any of you guys make bread? So next week I, so then this is an ongoing class. So I told her that she can choose what we want to make. And I gave her the choice of baking powder biscuits or cinnamon rolls. And she chose baking powder biscuits, but then she changed it to cinnamon rolls. So we'll make cinnamon rolls. So I'm not going to make them like from scratch. I won't make the dough from scratch from start to finish. So <laughs> I eat bread. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her um, either bring some dough that she already made or she can get a frozen bread dough. That's how I've done cinnamon rolls before is you just buy the frozen bread dough and um, just make sure it's thought out for class. And so then we'll do the second step. So I'm going to send her a you know, a paper with the information on it. I've made bread in the past, but haven't made any in a long time. I need to make some fresh bread. Yeah. And so a lot of people were making bread like in March and April. A lot of people were buying, we didn't know what was going to happen with, you know, pandemic and everything. So a lot of people were buying out the flour, they were buying out the yeast and all that. So I kind of stocked up. So I have a lot. <laughs> But I, we've still been able to buy bread and stuff. So I haven't really made a lot of bread. But I also um, have a bread machine. And that's a really good way to make quick bread as well. And the thing that I like to do about teaching making bread is that it is pretty easy. Like, because we don't do it a lot, we're busy people, and we don't really make bread very often, uh, we kind of think it's hard. But it's actually not very hard. And that's kind of what I was, I've taught home ec for the last seven years. And I kind of like to tell my, teach my students how to make the bread. And then I like to teach them all the different things you can make with that bread dough. This bread dough here is only, we used about six cups of flour. Um, we used some sugar, some vegetable oil, some salt and some yeast and that's really about it and then you want to get some good butter right <laughs> when you make the bread you want to put butter on it so um and i bought a whole bunch of dough way back in march so i, I mean flour so i have flour i have honey and i explained to her you could use honey instead of sugar you know so there are a few substitutions that you can make for the bread and then you can use this this bread dough, you can make cinnamon bread, you know, all different types of flavors of bread and just use that as your base of the actual bread itself. And um, we talked about, you know, the yeast is supposed to be warm. So the yeast is supposed to be like 110 to 115 degrees. So if you're just getting it out of your tap, then you want to just have it a little bit warm to your hand. Um, if you are, if it's too hot, it will kill the yeast. If it's too cold, then the yeast won't grow. So it's really pretty easy. And it, uh, it was a 40 minute class. So we basically just made the bread dough and then I told her what to do after. So after class, she was supposed to put it in a bowl, cover it, let it rise for about an hour and then half it and then separate it put them each into a bread pan, let it rise another hour or more, depending on how fluffy you want it. Like mine was a little fluffier. And, um, and then you bake it on 350 for 20 to 25 minutes. 
Do you have a link to the out school class you are taking that you mentioned earlier, the ongoing class that helps you organize and list classes? Okay, yes, that is, I don't have a link, but if you send me your, I can, I'm, I'm, ask, I'm in the process of asking her for a link. Um, the woman that I'm taking the class from is Lainey Goff. She's a lot, she does a lot on Instagram. I don't even know how I saw the video, but um, she has a lot of videos on YouTube and she's very successful without school. And so she has a subscription class that she is offering and she is offering it. This is her, Lainey Goff. And she's offering it to teachers that want to kind of streamline their their um, out school classes. So she's just teaching us how to kind of make it our own business and how to um, just be able to set up our classes so that we have repeat students and that kind of thing. And so if you just, you can look her up, maybe send her a message through YouTube. And um, yeah, so she has a class and she said that she's accepting more applications i think because we're it, she's going to close it out at a certain time because she also has a group where she coaches and stuff like that so if you message her then she can give you the information or you can message me and i'll give her your information and so she has a lot of really good information she's very good business wise and thing like that so i thought it definitely couldn't hurt and you can join with a subscription and then stay in it as long as you want like say you only want to do a month you can just say okay i'm done and i'm out <laughs> so you don't have to commit to anything um she has i think she has like a once a month class coaching meeting um on zoom but it's also like recorded so if you can't go to the meeting you can watch the replay replay and stuff yeah she makes a lot of videos and she's pretty good at it yeah and she's really good at um you know marketing so that's kind of what i was looking at like how to how to make my classes and how to make them attractive to other people so that's kind of what i'm looking at because i would really like i love i was a little skeptical i'm like maybe i don't want to do out school maybe i don't like the stress of waiting for students but when i taught this class yesterday the bread making class it was just so awesome the thing i like about out school is that when you create a class that other kids want you get the kids that want to learn and so this girl was so easy to teach like you know you kind of guide and she was doing it it was like it, it's different than when I taught home ec in school where you have these students they're required to take the class they don't necessarily love it but they have to do it for credit for the school right but this is different because they choose the classes that they want and so once I taught the class I was really excited about it i'm like oh and bring a friend yes and so then i also went to there's an out school discounted um facebook group and there was someone interested there so the next class i can have more students maybe i can add to that class so i figured i'll leave it as an ongoing class and then we can just make different types of um, bread. I have a whole notebook of all different recipes that I've done in the past and they're ongoing. So as long as the people come with the ingredients for the day, it should be fine if they jump in at any time. And then I can repeat, let's make bread again. And the next time it will be easier. You know, once you do it once, it's easier after that and i thought i might even ask the girl if she wants to make a cornucopia for thanksgiving so that would be in a couple of weeks so that's not my actual cornucopia one-time class but i could incorporate that into my bread making class so i love out school but i can't figure out when to offer classes nights mornings and so on yeah that's the same with me um i did this class was at 12 at, um in the afternoon and Eastern and she is in I think she said Minnesota 
So she was way out west. <laughs> so she was taking it in the morning. I was taking it 12 noon. I have a knitting class today at 2. And she's also Eastern. Um, she wanted to make, we're actually not even going to be knitting today. We're going to be doing um, crocheting. <laughs> we're going to be crocheting from grocery bags. Like you, you make the grocery bags into strips and then you make it into a long, like, it's kind of like plastic yarn. And then you crochet a mat. So that's what I'm going to do today. She asked to do that. So, yeah, so the, I just had one student for this couple weeks, and so I gave her the choice of what she wants to do next week. And, you know, teaching one student isn't much money, really, but it gives me experience in teaching, and it, it also connects me with the students. It gives me experience on, you know, teaching for the class and it gives me a place to build from right and also I can get build up my you know five star rating so I'm gonna keep doing it so I'm thinking for out school my passion seems to be in the home sciences like cooking and um you know knitting I should learn how to make crochet mats out of plastic bags. Such a cool idea. Yeah, a friend of mine makes them for homeless people. And they are not, like, they take a while. <laughs> I made one with my home at class. Um, and it took, we had like six or seven students. And it took all of us working together to get one done. Can I show you? Of course I can show you. <laughs> of course I can show you. There are videos on YouTube about it, but of course I would rather teach you myself. <laughs> so I am going to, I will try to take some videos of what I do today and um, I can show you guys. So, I mean, you could even do it on StreamYard Live, right? Because I can have up to five or six students. So we could meet up here. Um, the first thing you need to do is collect a lot of grocery bags. Like you collect the grocery bags that are plastic. And if you have other colors, that's good too. Like most of ours are kind of a brownish color. But if you find other colors, then incorporate those. You could ask your friends and neighbors if they have any extras. And... Um, <laughs> I want to learn how to crochet with plastic bags. <laughs> it looks so much fun. I will tell you this, okay? I made the mat, okay? And I'm like, what am I going to do with this thing? I did it with fabric scraps that were torn in strips. Oh, that's an idea too. And that might be easier to wash. The thing with the um, plastic bags are that you can, you know, they're already kind of garbage, right? So you're kind of recycling. How big is the crochet hook that you use? Okay, that is a really good question. I will show you in a minute. I will go get it. Um, I will run and go get it because I think it's in the other room. It's like the biggest metal one. It's not huge. You can use a bigger one if you want. I bought the biggest one I could find like on the on the spur of the moment and it seemed to be good um i'm not sure of the letter on it i will go get it in a minute um and so what you're going to do is you take the grocery bags and i'll make a little video because i have to make one for my student um and you flatten them out and then you just cut strips about this wide and then you're just going to get as many strips as you can. Just keep cutting and cutting and cutting. If you have a rotary cutter, that would work too. You could put the rotary cutter down and just, you know, cut easily with that. You could even put, you could even put a few bags down. And it doesn't have to be completely exact. Um, you want them somewhat the same width, but it doesn't have to be exact because you're going to kind of scrunch it up anyway. And then what you're going to do is you're going to loop them together. You don't want to tie them together. You just kind of loop them together and then you wind it up and make a big ball. 
and then you just start crocheting. And I found that I don't want to make too big of a ball, maybe like a ball about this big. And then you just make, like when I did, was doing it with my students, I just had, we had a, an assembly line going. Not a huge hook. And the other thing is I was thinking since I'm doing, this is kind of a finger knitting class, you could even do it as a finger knitting project and just use your finger as the crochet hook. So I thought that is also a possibility, which I may end up doing today because it's sort of a finger knitting class. But yeah, so there are a few details I have to work out, I guess. <laughs> I was thinking that is going to be really easy. But yeah, so I wanted to let you guys know too that I have connected my iPad to my new computer. And this is a really great way to show pictures. Um, I can like, I have cam twist. I'm back to using cam twist again. And so I can have my iPad next to me and I can show pictures, which I just did. Um, and I just wanted to, let me see, show you guys like you know say you want to show your kids some scenery and you can click it off really easily then you click it back on and you can show your pictures and this is a lot easier than holding your phone up to the screen and so you can show the students the pictures these were pictures that i took of the winter this is my mom's house and i loved it how the flag was was um out like that and so I just you know if you want to show your students pictures is a really good way of doing it by connecting your iPad to your computer if you have a Mac computer so if you are interested in that there is a group called VIP kid cam twist I think it's cam twisters something like that and there is a walkthrough on how to set it up onto your computer and then you can be showing pictures and you can also do it this way like you can make the picture big and make you small and you don't have to do show, sharing your screen or anything and from what I understand with the technology is that you um, don't use as much like your whatever's going on inside your computer is less than like it Manny cam and other things like that so it doesn't really take much out of your computer and it doesn't cause any kind of lag or anything like that so it's a really good way to be able to show rewards i do show rewards also like something like this i have rewards on the stars to apples and there's also rewards like this where you can drag the pictures like this and like I said you can also uh, switch the video source like this and then you can switch it back with just a press of a button so I can do this I could add as many dogs as I want I can make the dog bigger and that's a really fun way to do rewards you can also do this with Google Slides. Anything that I put on my, my iPad will go into that box. So that is a really awesome way to be able to show other visuals. Now, say you want to, like I'm making bread and I want to have two cameras, I could also put this on a camera setting. I can just go to my camera and I can also open the camera and switch okay no I don't want that so switch the camera which is right here I think yeah so I can switch the camera and so then I can have something where I can show my hands like this if you want to or I could put this on a stand so that I'm showing a book or something like that and for books you can also like put pages on this like say you have pages in your photo section you could also do that 
So this is, that was Jamaica. I was thinking about Jamaica the other day. So there's a lot you can do by hooking up your iPad to your computer and it's very easy. So I know some of my friends have Macs. So, all right. So I just wanted to share a little bit with you today and I do have to get back to work, back to other things, life. And um, I thank you guys for coming and I will definitely work on the, um, the bag program and I will get more information. Whoops. I will get more information to you. Now also on cam twist is kind of nice because you can adjust the lighting without lights. There's a setting here so I can go darker or lighter and it's called gamma adjust. So that's a really cool feature also. This is what I would be without the gamma adjust and this is with the gamma adjust. So you have to kind of play with it a little bit. And so if you're interested in any of that information, let me know and I can give you more information on that as well. All right. So thank you guys for watching and thank you for the thumbs up and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.